folks, check it out. This month we're going to be talking about the Ampeg SVT-810E. As many of you know, or you've probably seen, this cab's been a mainstay in the Ampeg lineup for, well, since back in 1969 when we first introduced the SVT. Uh, nothing's really changed that much on the cabinet except a few upgrades, but for the most part, it is an 800 watt, 4 ohm, 810 box uh, that we're going to, in the next couple of videos here, we're going to show you what builds an 810 cab and what it's actually made out of. So stick around and uh, hopefully you'll be able to learn something about our 810E and 810AV cabs. All right. Okay, what I've done here is I've taken the grill cloth off of the A10 cab so you can actually see the baffle board here and the, the raw speakers. This is what we call an infinite baffle design in that each row of 210s is its own sealed box. So essentially you've got four 210 cabinets built into one big box here. Uh, what that allows you to do is instead of having eight 10 inch speakers all fighting for the same sonic space within the same cabinet we've isolated into pairs so that there's four cabinets in there uh, that allows you to put a tremendous amount of power into the cabinet without it getting floppy sounding or breaking up you still get a nice tight punchy bottomy sound out of the 810 cab we've been doing this in 69 we haven't changed the design much since um, the speakers are custom made eminence 10 inch 32 ohm uh, stamp frame speakers made to our specs and uh, like I said there hasn't been much changed on this cabinet over the years we've done a couple of upgrades and a few refinements but for the most part that infinite baffle design has always been the same okay here we're looking at a raw 810 cabinet essentially no speakers no Tolex no grill cloth no insulation no nothing basically just the wires in the box and as you can see you know I've got the bottom 410s loaded, but I took the, the 10s out of the top set of 410s. And if I walk over, you'll see that there's the infinite baffle design. Each set of 210s is sealed off from one another so that, like I was showing you before, each row of 210s is completely independent of one another. So if I was to push on this speaker, you'd actually see this speaker pop out. It's actually a vacuum sealed design, just the way it is. Um, not that it's hermetically sealed or anything like that, but just by default with the speakers being sealed in there, uh, if you push on one speaker, you see the other speaker pop out. The other thing I'd like to show you is the construction of the cabinet. If I pan in, you'll see that we're actually using 11-ply Baltic birch plywood. And this cabinet will probably, in fact, I know it'll never see itself into production. That's why it's up here and we're shooting a video but it's a uh, it's what we call a raw cabinet and uh, it's taken apart so that you can see what the cabinet is actually made out of so there you have it okay check it out here I've actually we're looking at the back of the A10 cab um, I've got it leaned up against the wall so that we can check out the a couple of new features on it as well but if we focus in here on the back panel you'll see that it features uh, two quarter inch inputs and two Neutrik inputs uh, going into those two inputs either this one this set of quarter inch or these set of Neutriks give you the full range of the cabinet if you want to split the cabinet you can actually access this input and that accesses the top 410 speakers uh, by doing that then you can then access the bottom 410 cluster of speakers with either one of these two inputs as well. So what that allows you to do if you're running a 4 Pro and you want to run it stereo or you want to run it um, by amp, you can access each set of 410s by plugging into this one first and then going into uh, the bottom inputs. Uh, also, if I pan back, you'll see that the 810 features a dolly style handle so that makes it easier to transport and also has skid rails those two black rails on each side of the input those allow you to be able to slide the cabinet in and out of the back of your truck or the back of your van uh, moving down to the bottom of the cabinet we also put a new kick plate on there that's basically 16 gauge steel that not only is it a kick plate but it also goes over to 
the casters. So now the casters are mounted to the kick plate and then into the cabinet. And that just f facilitates a much better mounting system than taking the casters and mounting them directly to the plywood. So.